Let's bring in business editor Ross Greenwood on air every day at 4.30 p.m. right before my show to discuss this. Ross, so good to see you. Look, this is heading towards a very serious situation. The United States will go into recession if Joe Biden and the Republicans don't reach an agreement. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe that the Republicans or the Democrats would let it get to that point, but they're getting close to the wire. And it's been there before, let's be honest, Sherry. So you've seen situation where national parks in the US have been closed down, uh, where federal workers haven't been paid and have been laid off until there was agreement. Um, this almost becomes the uh, ultimate in brinkmanship. As you point out, that debt ceiling is $31.4 trillion, but it's already well above that. And the reality is that the United States needs to find a solution to it. The United States, let's be honest, is not going to default on its debts. It never has, it never will. Um, but the reality is this is about the brinkmanship to try and extract concessions from Joe Biden. At the same time, that really the Republican Party is trying to get uh, Biden and the Democrats to start to cut government spending. And that's going to be a part of its response, because quite clearly, as you say, the US economy right now is teetering on the brink of recession. Um, and indeed, even today, you had the boss of the biggest bank, JP Morgan Chase, in the United States, Jamie Dimon, warning that interest rates might not be coming down, as everybody assumes, in fact, might be going up. And he says that really could trigger an even deeper recession in the United States. So the sooner they clean this up, the better it will be. Yeah, it's hard to believe they've left it this long. Now, over to debt in Australia. We've seen the Victorian budget today. Victoria's on track to hit over $170 billion in debt in the next three years. This is in large part because of the lavish gov government spending during the lockdowns. Here was the Treasurer, Tim Pallas, today. Won't be contradicted on this. This has been the most difficult budget uh, that I've had to frame, and this is my ninth budget now. So I can tell you it, uh, it has been a uh, very long journey. But Opposition leader John Pesuto was scathing. What today's budget reveals is that Victoria is broke. Life is getting harder under Labor, and under Labor, Victorians are paying the price for Labor's incompetence. This is a budget that is mean. It is nasty. It visits pain on every Victorian. Every Victorian will pay some part of the price. Ross, what are your main takeouts from the budget handed down today? It's a good old-fashioned Robin Hood budget. Effectively, what they're doing is saying that the, the wealthy can pay, uh, that they've made good money through property price rises or uh, business improvements during and after the COVID period, and now is their time to repay the state government back. In fact, they'd almost be doing a part of Anthony Albanese's job in some ways by actually clawing back some of these taxes. The interesting part about this is the tax, the increased payroll tax that they'll bring in. Um, this is really, if you like, almost a tax on everybody who employs somebody in, in, in Victoria. Even though they've raised the threshold uh, from 700000 it'll go to 900000 then to a $1 million. In other words, that's the totality of your payroll uh, before you start to pay payroll tax. What will happen is if your payroll is more than $10 million, then you're going to pay an extra one percentage point of payroll tax. It'll take Victoria's payroll tax to 5.85%, which if you think about that in terms of if you're Bunnings or if you're Coles or if you're, I don't know, a big employer, there's lots mm. of them there. Um, the real, the reality is it might be a disincentive for you putting on another worker at a time when really, obviously, there is going to be increasing pressure on the workforce in Victoria.